Hi everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. So for today's video I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on my current luxury wishlist as of mid-September 2021. I did film a luxury wishlist video I'd say about a year or so ago, maybe more towards the one and a half year mark. So yeah, I figured it was about time that I talked you through the current status of my luxury wishlist because at least when it comes to me there's always some movement in the wishlist. I did tick off a couple of items that have made their way into my collection and also some items, uh, yeah, I realized that they might not be working out for me after all, so they have left my wishlist and some other items have made their way onto my wishlist. So that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. But before we dive into the depths of my luxury addiction, hi, in case this is your first time watching, my name's Leslie and I'm so glad you clicked on today's video. On my channel I talk about luxury and shopping, but both from a mindful and sustainable perspective. I share review videos, comparison videos, what's in my bag, haul videos, shopping vlogs, you name it. So if that sounds like a thing, I would love for you to consider subscribing to my channel and also thumb up this video, that would help me out a lot. I upload every Wednesday and I would love to have you back. Oh, by the way, I'll try to insert photos of the particular item that I'm talking about on the screen. So I'm going to scoot to the side so there's enough room for the photo to be inserted. But yeah, the first category we're talking about is jewelry. And if you've watched my wishlist video from last year, you know that the first item I mentioned on there is the Van Cleef & Appel's vintage Alhambra necklace in full gold in this yeah, guilloche style. Again, photo will be on the screen. I can't say I've crossed it off my wishlist in terms of yeah not being interested in it anymore but it's pretty low on the wishlist because while I think it's absolutely beautiful I'm not that much of a necklace person. No necklace today and also on a day-to-day -day basis I hardly ever wear necklaces. Now while that might come down to me just not having a nice necklace to wear on a day-to-day -day basis I'm still a little torn on whether I want to spend yeah Van Cleef & Appel's kind of money on a necklace especially the full gold ones are pretty up there in price but yeah it's still on my wish list i did treat myself to a vca piece earlier this year for my birthday uh, the bracelet in mother of pearl that one is absolutely beautiful it hasn't been on my wish list from last year but i'm so so glad i added that to my collection it's definitely one of my best purchases of 2021 talking about five motif bracelets the five motif bracelet also comes in a guilloche style, again photo on the screen. That one is so beautiful and it also looks perfect stacked with the mother of pearl one. But again, full gold, it's pretty up there in price tag. I mean, even the mother of pearl one was <laughs> kind of exp no, very expensive, but the full gold guilloche one is yeah, definitely a step up from that even. So I really have to make up my mind about it and it's definitely not something I have to buy within the next year or so but it's in the back of my mind and yeah I would really love either the necklace or the bracelet. Yeah watch the space I'm not decided uh, yet and for the time being I'm perfectly fine with only owning one piece of ECA because yeah my five motif one is definitely uh, such a dreamy piece and yeah I'm so glad I purchased that but anyway enough rambling you get the gist um, those two pieces would be a dream but oh by the way that applies to the entire wish list i'm talking about today it's not a wish list in terms of these are the items i'm going to purchase within the next one or two years some of the items might make their way into my collection sooner rather than later but there are also some pieces that i would be happy to add to my collection at any point throughout my life maybe some items will make their way into my collection in 10 years and that would be perfectly fine. But yeah, just to give you an idea, because I know my wishlist is on the more extensive side, just know that while it's a somewhat of a realistic wishlist, it's not a shopping list basically of items I'm gonna purchase within the next year or two. From VCA to somewhat of a more digestible price tag when it comes to jewelry, because the second item I mentioned in my 2020 wishlist was the Hermes Click H bracelet, so yeah, the bangle, and I'm happy to report that that is one of the items I have actually ticked off my wish list. I don't wear it today, but yeah, I really, really love the piece. I bought that one, I think, around September last year, and 
I've been wearing it tons. I did film a dedicated review and yeah, wear and tear update video on that one. There are some signs of wear and tear, but I've worn it pretty consistently. Granted, since I bought my VCA bracelet, the MS click bracelet kind of went on a bit of a back burner because I love my VCA one so much, but regardless, it's still such a great piece and I'm very happy that I purchased my click H bracelet last year. So onto a couple of jewelry pieces that have made their way into my wish list um, compared to last year, because last year I only mentioned the VCA Gyoshi necklace and the click H. In terms of fine jewelry, I have two more items to talk about and both are from Hermes. I would love to get either the CDC ring in rose gold, again, photo on the screen, or the Kelly ring. Both are beautiful and the Kelly ring does come in a very slim size and a slim size and the slim one does come with four tiny little diamonds. Obviously that reflects on the price tag, but yeah, both of these rings are beautiful. And the thing with rings, at least for me personally, and one of the reasons I guess I haven't pulled the trigger on a fine jewelry ring is I prefer to have these kind of rings that are, I don't know if you can see it, that have yeah basically a gap right here so you can adjust the size or the circumference of the ring because my fingers immediately show if I don't drink enough water, if I eat too much yeah sodium, in general if I eat too much because yeah weight gain definitely shows on my fingers for some reason inner thighs and my face I know that's TMI but yeah whatever so I'm not too sure about spending 1k or above on a ring and yeah run the risk of not being able to wear it on most days or on most occasions or having the risk of wearing it on my finger and not being able to take it off because my fingers have swollen so that's one of the reasons why I haven't gotten a ring yet, but both are absolutely beautiful. And the last piece of jewelry on my luxury wish list is another piece from Hermes, but not fine jewelry. It's fashion jewelry or costume jewelry. And I know I've talked your ears off about not spending too much money on yeah, costume jewelry anymore, at least when it comes to luxury price tags. I mean, I do have quite a sizable collection of Chanel earrings. These, for example, I haven't worn these in ages. Yeah, because they are quite a pain if you yeah, have to wear a face mask um, because this anchor does have a lot of like hooks or like nooks and crannies that your face mask might get tangled into, but <laughs> that's beside the point. I do have quite a number of Chanel earrings and while I love them, <sighs> they're costume jewelry and they are pretty expensive for that. But I'm an earring person, which is also why I'm very much tempted to buy an Hermes pop H or pop ash uh, earring those like colorful stud ones again I'm gonna insert a photo because it's a lot easier than me trying to describe what they look like yeah I just love the pop of color they look so fun and colorful and yeah maybe I will treat myself to one of those when I'm in south of France I think this video will go up before I travel maybe that's something I'm gonna treat myself to kind of as a souvenir I did mention in one of my other videos that maybe I will buy a pair of Chanel earrings but yeah I come to think of it Chanel earrings aren't on my wish list MS pop ash earrings are on my wish list so maybe that's gonna be kind of a souvenir from south of France anyway that was the jewelry category moving on to Louis Vuitton which was the second category I talked about in my 2020 wish list so in last year's video I had four items on my Louis Vuitton wish list basically a large vintage trunk a small trunk like the Coffret Tresor 24 a keypole in either 45 or 55, I'm not too sure anymore, in the monogram and Macassar style, and the Rose de Vent perfume. Now, I did tick off the Rose de Vent perfume off my wish list. I purchased that one last summer roundabout and I had the bottle engraved with my initials. The thing is, um, I can't confidently say that I'm glad I ticked it off my wish list because I realized that the formulation of the tester is actually different from the actual perfume that you're able to buy and for some reason the perfume itself uh, doesn't really work on my yeah, skin chemistry but still it's an item that I've ticked off my wish list so that one's gone. Also gone from my wish list is the Makasa Keep All. 
I still love the way it looks on other people and if you're someone that travels a lot, number one, I'm jealous <laughs> and number two, the Makasa Keyball is definitely yeah, a great bag to go for because it comes with a shoulder strap so you're not carrying it by the top handles. I still love the look of it, especially the combination of the yeah, classic LV monogram and then the black coated leather as opposed to the yeah, untreated Vachetta leather that is prone to getting watermarks and stuff. But yeah. I decided to take it off my wish list because I wouldn't be able to use it as much as I would like to to be able to yeah basically justify spending that kind of money plus there have been a number of price increases and yeah I just I don't think I'd get enough wear out of that piece so that's off the wish list too and the other two items which is the vintage trunk like one of those giant ones that you can use as a console table or as a coffee table still very much on my wish list but as i said uh, at the beginning of my video that's definitely not something i will acquire in a year or two maybe 10 years down the line when i have maybe a nicer apartment or a house who knows and have more space to give it the space it deserves basically because that's such a beautiful piece obviously very expensive in particular when you go for a yeah decent enough size in good condition but still on my wish list um, and still something i'm dreaming about but it's not going to happen in yeah the next one or two years for sure and the coffre de trésor 24 is still on my wish list emilia from emilia rose's closet recently got one for her 40th birthday and that one is so beautiful she also had it hand painted by one of the lv artists and it's just so pretty and um, dale from dale's addiction did buy a similar trunk she bought the flower trunk and that one looked beautiful too i think it's a little bigger than the coffre tresor 24 but correct me if i'm wrong I think she returned it because there were some issues with the hardware and it wasn't as new as she would have liked it to be. But yeah, a small Louis Vuitton trunk is definitely on my wish list. I mean, it's a lot of money for something you can't really use as much as a handbag at least, but it's such a beautiful decorative piece and yeah, a piece of Louis Vuitton history, which I appreciate. And anyway, <laughs> enough rambling. Uh, that's it for Louis Vuitton. I don't have any additional items that have made their way onto my Louis Vuitton wish list since last year. I don't know. I wouldn't say I've fallen out of love with Louis Vuitton, but yeah, the amount of items I purchased from the brand has definitely decreased or slowed down. I've let go of some of my Louis Vuitton items. I mean, I still do have a number of handbags from them and SLGs and stuff, but I'm not super, super passionate about the brand anymore. And the pieces I am passionate about are more the heritage pieces that go back to the history of Louis Vuitton, such as the vintage trunk or the yeah, small coffre trésor. So yeah, that's it for Louis Vuitton. So let's talk about handbags because as you might have been able to tell that's definitely the category I'm most passionate and excited about and in last year's wishlist video I mentioned four handbags that I had my eye on which is a Chanel Trendy CC, a Chanel Classic Flap in either medium or yeah I, did, I don't think I specified the size but I specified that I was very much interested in a grey classic flap then I also mentioned the Dior, Lady Dior in the large size in black with gold hardware and an Hermes Birkin in size 35 Epsom leather black with gold hardware or rose gold for that matter. Now I didn't purchase any of those bags yet but I did uh, decide to take off the gray classic flap of my wish list as well as the trendy CC. When it comes to the trendy CC I still like the look of it but it's only available on lambskin and I don't know I think one of the main reasons why I yeah added it to my wishlist is that I had been seeing it on social media and yeah YouTube Instagram a lot and yeah as social media works the more you see something you, the more you're interested and intrigued by it so while I still like the look of it I don't think that's a bag that I'd be too keen on adding to my collection so that one's gone as is the chanel classic flap in gray i mean again such a beautiful bag and chanel comes out with amazing shades of gray in most of their collections or especially yeah the last couple of years there have been some beautiful shades of gray 
but the price tag of classic flaps has just reached a point that's not really justifiable for me anymore. I mean, I'm so glad I purchased my Jumbo uh, in March 2019, but since then there have been multiple price increases and I know that's just yeah the name of the game when it comes to Chanel and maybe yeah in 10 years time I will look back and say oh my god why didn't I buy 10 Jumbos because they were so inexpen inexpensive at the time because I know prices will only go up from here but while I still love the idea of a gray classic flap I decided to take it off my wish list. In terms of the large Lady Dior I'm a little torn. I mean I wouldn't mind adding it to my collection but I did try it on a couple of months ago and I realized that it's quite a large bag and it does look a little too bulky on my frame. I mean I'm not a tiny tiny person, I'm pretty tall actually, but still it looked a little overwhelming. Maybe that's also down to me wearing, I think I wore a white maxi dress on that day, very flowy and stuff, so maybe that also contributed to me thinking that the large is a little too overwhelming. But yeah, the large is nice but I actually I'm more interested in adding the medium size which is still quite a sizable bag and obviously it doesn't fit like your laptop and stuff but I wouldn't want to wear the Lady Dior as a daily or like work bag anyway. So a Lady Dior is still on my wish list. I just shifted my focus towards a smaller size. And the last handbag I mentioned in last year's video is definitely still on my wish list. I would still very much like to get a Birkin 35 in black. However, I'm not that laser focused on getting a black one anymore. I mean, I would love to get a black one, but MS also does beautiful other neutral colors. They have a wide selection of gray shades, more on the darker side or on the lighter side. I mean, gray, which is kind of an off-white, is absolutely beautiful too, but I wouldn't trust myself with buying such an expensive bag and then having it in white. I mean, that's just asking for a disaster. So yeah, either black or a medium to dark shade of gray would be beautiful. Also, I wouldn't be opposed to getting a smaller size, so maybe a 30, because again, I said the large Lady Dior looked a little bulky on me, so chances are the Birkin 35 might look a little bulky on me too. Obviously with MS, you can't just walk into a boutique and be like, okay, I want to try out all the sizes that you have and all the leather versions that you have it's more like yeah some kind of guesswork i mean i did go into the boutique uh, yeah a year or so ago and placed my wish list which i think will have expired by now or who knows maybe they didn't even register my wish list because i'm not a regular customer at hermes which i know is a bad thing when it comes to potentially securing a Birkin or a Kelly. Anyway, when I went into the boutique last year, they actually yeah, had a Birkin 35 for me to try on. And at the time, I mean, it did look great and I definitely preferred it over the 30, but I did lose some weight since the beginning of the year. Not like a considerable amount, but a noticeable amount, at least for me in, in my eyes. So while before I would have thought that the 30s would be way too small on me and would make me look even bigger than I was, maybe now I can get behind the 30 size. But yeah, again, it's not like you can go into the boutique and be like, yeah, I'll take one of those and be done with it. It's a process and you have to make some sacrifices. I mean, you don't have to, but yeah, anyway, that's just what you sign up with when it comes to MS. And I wouldn't be opposed to also owning a Kelly at some point, but yeah, both Kellys and Birkins obviously are very hard to get and I'm in no rush. I mean, I would love to get either a Kelly or a Birkin before my 30th birthday, but I still have some time until that happens. So yeah, I guess watch the space and yeah, fingers crossed, uh, I would love to get either a Birkin or a Kelly, preferably a Birkin first, but as I said, I wouldn't be opposed to a Kelly either. God, I feel like I've been talking for ages at this point. Sorry about that. I hope you have some snacks ready or just pause this video grab a couple of snacks or a cup of coffee, tea, wine, champagne, whatever, come back and yeah, finish the video with me. Uh, thank you for sticking around for this long and through some of my rambly portions of this video. Anyway, I do have a couple of handbags that have made their way onto my wish list compared to last year. The first one being a business affinity from Chanel. I would love to get one of those, either in black, obviously that would be a safe route, but I'm not too set on the color yet. And I also already have a black 
Chanel handbag. Obviously that's a classic flap, but I mean, the business affinity does have some quilting, so it's recognizable Chanel and maybe I should venture out in terms of colors, especially because I, yeah, as I mentioned, I decided to take the gray classic flap off my wish list. Maybe a gray business affinity would be a better option because I mean, it's still up there in price tag, but nothing near compared to a classic flap. So yeah, I think if I decide to go for a business affinity, it would be either in a beautiful shade of gray. As I said, Chanel has been killing it with their shades of gray over the last couple of years, or maybe even a white. As I said, white is pretty scary, especially when you look at yeah, the price tags of these items. But I did try on a white business affinity a couple of months ago and oh, that one looked so beautiful also with champagne gold hardware or like regular gold hardware. Such a dreamy combination but again uh, I would be a little too scared to wear it yeah, ever I guess and it's a lot of money for a handbag just to be sitting in my closet because I'm too afraid to take it out and yeah, wear it so maybe grey is a great alternative and like in between color between white and black. Yeah, that makes sense. The second bag that is new on my wish list is another Chanel one. I would love to get a vintage Chanel Diana bag. Most of the ones I'm seeing on yeah, pre-love websites are in lambskin, but I feel like when it comes to a vintage bag, which already does come with some signs of wear and tear and the leather doesn't look as pristine as if you were to go for a lambskin bag new from the boutique, I think I'd be okay with a lambskin bag. And I mean, the shine on vintage lambskin bags is just absolutely stunning. But the Diana bags have gone up in price on the pre-love market so much over the last couple of years. So I don't know if I'd be willing to part with like 4K on a yeah, vintage bag. Still have to make up my mind about it. I'm not in a rush, but on the other hand, I'm also kind of in a rush because the longer I wait, chances are the higher the price tag on the vintage Diana will be. Plus, I definitely have to put some time into researching it because if I were to get a vintage Diana, I would want one from my birth years. So that obviously singles out a lot of maybe okayish priced Diana flaps. If they're not from my birth year, then I'm not that interested. Yeah. I'm, as you might be able to tell, I'm struggling a bit with that one, but I would love to get a vintage Diana flap at some point. And the last new handbag on my luxury wish list is from Bulgari, and it's the Serpenti Forever handbag. I'm not too sure on the color yet. Either black would be obviously a safe choice, but also they have some beautiful like off-white cream colors. Gray is also an option again. Yeah, I did film a come shopping with me vlog a couple of weeks ago at this point where I went into a Bulgari boutique for the first time and yeah, looked at the bags in person and <sighs> those bags are works of art, uh, especially the hardware. Obviously, Bulgari comes from jewelry and you can definitely tell yeah, when you look at the hardware on the handbags because the chains are so intricate and obviously the signature snake head at yeah, the buckle of the bag basically looks so beautiful. Anyway, I would love to get a Serpenti Forever handbag at some point, maybe even this year, because so far I've been really good in terms of buying luxury handbags. The only bag I bought this year was my Balenciaga Ludis in the marble design, and yeah, that was even a pre-love bag. So I've been really good, so I feel like um, there might be another handbag in the cards for me for this year, maybe for Christmas as a present to myself, but yeah, the Serpenti Forever line from Bulgari is just so beautiful. That's it for handbags. Let's wrap it up with some yeah, miscellaneous stuff, I guess. Number one is that I would love to expand my Hermes tableware collection. I do own two pieces of Hermes tableware. Both are from the Mosaic or Van Quatre line. So the gray platinum kind of mosaic design. Again, photos will be on the screen. I'm just obsessed with this design and yeah, the simplicity and the monochromatic look while still being able to detect all these details and the Hermes Ex Libris uh, sign that's in the middle of most of their pieces. So beautiful and there are a lot of other items in that line. Obviously you have a, um, I think they're called Vitposh, so kind of an ashtray or just a deep dish or tray. Anyway, again, I'm gonna insert some photos so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. 
That one is so beautiful and I was pretty close to buying it last year, but then decided to go for the MS Click H bracelet, which obviously I don't regret at all, but I'm still very much interested in buying this like, yeah, tray kind of thing. Also, they have obviously a lot of other plates. They have round plates, which are beautiful too. Um, cups, mugs, um, yeah, tiny saucers. Um, I would love to expand my collection basically because while I hardly ever use them for food, they just look so beautiful as like decorative pieces on your coffee table or yeah, for Instagram flat lace, which obviously isn't a good reason for buying that kind of an expensive yeah, piece of tableware. But I mean, I think some of you might get my craziness. So yeah, that's miscellaneous item number one. And item number two, I just realized that all my miscellaneous items are actually from MS. Thanks to YouTube and Instagram, I'm actually toying with the idea of buying an Hermes Avalon blanket, either in this like beige-ish colorway or in the gray colorway, because obviously, um, yeah, my sofa is gray, so the gray would look best, I guess. Yeah, let's just say they are super expensive and super unnecessary, but they look so beautiful. And yeah, thanks to Instagram, I'm really toying with the idea of buying one of those. But it's not like, yeah, not very high on my wish list. Let's put it that way. But I also wouldn't mind adding one to my collection or like to my home decor in the nearish future. So there you have it. That was my updated luxury wish list as of September 2021. As I said, I'm very much aware that not all of the items I mentioned in today's video will make their way into my collection throughout the next one or two years, but that's perfectly fine. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. As I said, I upload every Wednesday and I would really love to have you back. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and until next time, bye.